The Soybean School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Pride Seeds, High Stick NT, and Cruiser Max Vibrance Bean. Jordan Bannerman, entomologist with the University of Manitoba, joins us here on uh, Real Agriculture. We're in a soybean field near Carmen, and Jordan, you're involved in some research looking at soybean aphid thresholds and uh, how we can uh, integrate information about beneficial natural predators of, uh, of soybean aphids. Can you explain what, uh, what we're looking at in this field? Yeah, so absolutely. So um, most soybean growers are probably familiar with uh, the current economic threshold that we use in soybean. Uh, the current economic threshold is uh, an average of 250 soybean aphids per plant um, in about 80% of the plants uh, in a field. Um, and uh, those, that population has to be uh, still increasing, evidence of increasing and your plants have to be, uh, you know, uh, n not past the R5 stage. Um, what we're really looking at uh, is we're looking at if we can refine uh, a threshold uh, to integrate more information about uh, the beneficial predators and parasites that attack soybean aphid. Um, recent research has really kind of demonstrated that although the threshold, you know, is a sound threshold, um, it's probably a little bit on the conservative side. Uh, the threshold of 250 aphids per plant uh, was developed to basically give growers about a seven day uh, window to, you know, kind of reassess their field and to potentially control uh, the aphids uh, if they, you know, the populations are still increasing. Um, but what we're seeing in a lot of research trials is that even aphid populations, uh, you know, when field aphid populations reach that 250 uh, aphids per plant, there's no real guarantee that those aphids uh, will actually reach the economic injury level of 675 aphids per plant. Um, and one of the big reasons, or one of the, one of the primary reasons uh, for this is the role that uh, beneficial predators and parasites play in controlling the soybean aphid populations. Um, so, you know, as we were walking out to shoot this clip, uh, we were actually uh, walking through this field and finding uh, ladybird beetles, uh, there's ground beetles uh, crawling through this field, and uh, many predators can be very effective at controlling soybean aphid. Um, so uh, we have a demo set up in the field here, uh, and this demo is actually to kind of demonstrate that very fact. Um, what we have is we have uh, two types of cages set up. We have an exclusion cage, which we set up. Uh, we put soybean aphids on a plant, uh, and we enclose it in a cage uh, and uh, exclude all of the predators. Uh, and we do the same uh, basically uh, without the cage. Uh, so what we do is we also uh, add aphids to particular plants we remove the other plants around uh, and uh, we just let those aphids grow. But those aphids are exposed to weather, they're exposed to predators, and you know, in as little as one week, you can see a dramatic difference in the number of aphids that you have on these plants. Uh, and a lot of that uh, difference is attributed to the activities of predators. So we just looked on, the, on that plant that is exposed to other insects and what did we find? Ten? A, hand, a handful of, of aphids? Yeah, so this, uh, this soybean uh, plant was, uh, there was seven soybean aphids added uh, about ten days ago. Um, and we come back and we checked it uh, just before this clip and there's only about ten aphids on this plant. Um, so there's been absolutely no uh, increase in the aphid population after, uh, you know, about ten days. Whereas uh, in uh, the plants that have been excluded, the predators have been excluded, uh, there are, uh, you know, probably over a hundred aphids per plant by now. Uh, so that shows uh, both how quickly soybean aphids can reproduce uh, without the presence of predators, but also the, the very important role that the predators are playing in controlling the pest. So when it comes back to that threshold that we have right now, the 250 climbing and, and those other uh, criteria that have to be met, is there a way that we can include beneficial numbers or, or some sort of factor for, uh, for the predators? Yeah, absolutely. So there have been a couple of efforts uh, made so far uh, to develop what we would call uh, a dynamic action threshold. So that's a threshold where you would count the aphid populations, but at the same time you would also count the populations of the important predators. So the ladybird beetles, uh, things like green lacewing larvae, uh, some predatory bugs uh, like aureus, uh, which is a minute pirate bug. Um, and 
use that natural enemy information to adjust your threshold. Uh, now, to be clear, uh, whether predators are present or not, the economic injury level of 675 aphids per plant remains the same. What, we would, what you would be changing with uh, a dynamic threshold is you would be saying, okay, if there's 250 aphids, but there's also an average of uh, you know, one ladybird beetle per plant, well, maybe that threshold should be more closer to 350 or 400 aphids, because the presence of those predators is really reducing uh, the reproductive potential of the aphids. Um, so what this is doing is this is basically just refining uh, uh, what is currently a fairly uh, conservative uh, economic threshold. Or at least that's what the as evidence is suggesting, that it, that it is uh, functioning uh, but fairly conservative in nature. So do we expect to adjust to this dynamic action threshold or what's the, what's the next step in, in this? So this is still really in kind of the research phase. Um, so there have been a number of groups, uh, one group in Ontario, uh, one group uh, in the United States that have you know, kind of made efforts to actually formally develop a dynamic action threshold. Uh, but uh, it's not something that we will necessarily see you know, right away in uh, an area like Manitoba. Uh, there are a couple things to consider. Uh, one is, uh, you know, the assemblage, the different species of predators uh, that are preying on soybean aphid, they differ regionally. Um, so uh, in terms of, you know, taking uh, what was developed elsewhere and kind of put it into place here, it probably needs a little more refinement. Um, there's also uh, some of the work that I'm currently involved in uh, is looking at things as basic as what's the best way to actually sample natural enemies in a soybean field and asking the question, you know, is it, is the way that we sample soybean aphid appropriate for also sampling the predators or should we, you know, incorporate a second method that's potentially more accurate or more precise? Um, because, you know, these are, uh, these decisions are all based on economics and you want to have the best information available. Um, so it's something that's still really kind of under development, but it's something that looks very promising. Um, and uh, it's definitely uh, a concept that's been kind of further developed in soybean than it has been in, in uh, most other cropping systems in North America to date. All right. Well, we'll look forward to, uh, to further findings and, and further updates on this, Jordan. Thanks for your time. Great. Thank you. Yeah, here we go. So, uh, you know, when you're actually counting uh, soybean aphids uh, on a plant, the best thing to do is actually physically remove the plant um, from uh, the ground. Uh, then you can do a really thorough job because when you're searching for soybean aphids, um, a lot of them can be found in uh, the new growth on the plant. Um, so the new growth, uh, and they can even be found in kind of the folded up very small leaves um, because uh, when there's not a lot of aphids on a plant, they actually prefer the new growth because it's the most nutritious. Um, so you can see, uh, you know, there are a couple soybean aphids on this plant. Um, very, very low numbers. Uh, and, uh, you know, this is after a week and a half. Uh, there started, uh, this plant started uh, a week and a half ago with seven soybean aphids. Um, so there's been effectively zero growth over that time uh, when they've been exposed to uh, the predators. Uh, and uh, also the weather.